Uh, first of all, it's a mistake to ever give a microphone to the general officer, so I'm going to say I'm going to read my remarks so I keep this on time. But let me just start by saying good afternoon, and uh, my name is uh, General John Tuey. I have the great opportunity and uh, privilege to be the commander for the Washington Air National Guard and the Assistant Adjutant General. Uh, my boss, Major General Brett Doherty, uh, unfortunately couldn't make this today, so he asked me to step in, and as the good news, as you just heard in a little brief file, I'm a knuckle-dragging aviator and not a cyber wizard, so we shouldn't lose anybody in some geek speak today. But here's what I do know. I know we live in unprecedented times. Uh, cyber risk, vulnerabilities, threats, outright attacks. I mean, virtually every single day by bad actors and cyber criminals. And hence, I want to thank the Lexington Institute for uh, bringing us uh, to together today and bringing some light to the subject, the National Guard's role in uh, cybersecurity for the power grid. It's my intent to share just some very basic thoughts uh, on why the National Guard makes sense in this role. As you know, uh, the National Guard has been around since 1636, and we've always been at the ready to protect the citizens of this great nation, whether in our federal status, in our state status. This dual role allows the Guard to uniquely leverage our capacities and capabilities for both mission sets. My comments this morning do not reflect all other 50 states and territories, nor the Air Force, nor the National Guard Bureau. That's my disclaimer. Only Washington State. So I'm talking, in fact, I'm standing here before you in my state status uh, and not federal. Uh, in our state, we look at uh, the response to cyber threats like we look at any other natural disaster, man-made or natural. When directed by the governor, we seek to respond, limit, mitigate, uh, restore, uh, regardless of the crisis. And I must emphatically point out, we're always out there under the direction of civil authorities. We're never just out there on our own. So why the Guard in this question of cybersecurity and the power grid? I think the first reason and the word that comes to mind is trust. Trust based on our competency, uh, our experience, our expertise, our community relations, talking about partnerships, our longstanding stability, and our proven results in support of the civilian and federal partners, and most importantly, the American people. In a few minutes, you'll hear from Mr. Beaverness. Uh, Benjamin is uh, the CIO of one of our public utility companies in Washington State, and I'll defer to his comments on the assessment that was conducted by the Guard. Uh, needless to say, you'll hear the process was well coordinated and executed by a comprehensive memorandum of agreement, inclusive non disclosure agreements, and explicit rules of engagement with stringent controls in place. In fact, it took almost two years to actually put this concept together. Uh, with a plethora of attorneys uh, wrangling over what's legal, what's not, all the rules of engagement, etc. Uh, and again, what's important, uh, and given it was directed by the governor to our National Guard, by the invitational request of the public utility company, it was conducted not in federal status, but in our state status. As you know, we have both. With state equipment and state software, and so hence we didn't use anything federal, no conflicts of interest, purpose violations for those that understand fiscal law, that sort of thing. And I also want to just uh, publicly thank Mr. Bevenis and his company for their uh, insightful, progressive leadership in this area, uh, really partnered well in the information sharing that came out of it. They're true pioneers. We need more of that from the public utility companies. I need to also note that this consultation only highlighted areas for review, uh, and in no way we didn't fix anything. Uh, I think the important part, the Guard's mandate was to assess, not correct, uh, the fixing is always left for the customer to do, whether internal means or through private commercial enterprise. Hence, we're not in competition with the private sector. In fact, one could easily argue that by our assessments, uh, we're actually creating opportunities for the public sector. Again, why the Guard? Uh, at the very core of the Guard is the people. And in this domain of cyber, Washington National Guard is uniquely blessed uh, with tremendously talented members, who bring a plethora of industry experience, technical expertise, business acumen, depth of knowledge and capability, and esprit de corps. And yes, because of our physical location to some of the big cyber giants out in that area, uh, such as Microsoft and others, uh, these members are at the center of excellence and on the cutting edge of technology, techniques, tactics, training, innovation. But I'd argue that many states, uh, like my colleagues here today from California and Maryland, uh, much the same way have also gifted members that they're leveraging for both their state and federal missions. And speaking of federal missions, uh, the creation of a cyber protection team is clearly a step in the right direction. As part of U.S. Cybercom's mission force, 
Uh, these teams will ensure network security uh, and defense for our DOD information networks worldwide. What makes Washington a little bit unique as part of their CPT unit tasking is they also have the industrial control systems and the uh, supervisory control and data acquisition SCADA in their mission directives. Uh, several of these specialty task members assisted with the assessment you're going to hear about in a few minutes. This collaborative venture with the utility company proved invaluable in shaping our processes and developing training, along with forging the path forward for other assessments in the future. It, but it also allowed us to take a look at our state agencies and a better way to provide protection for them as well. As you can imagine, uh, you have a, a breach of a, of a state agency, such as maybe Department of Licensing, and you could really set yourself up for some very expensive repair, if ever compromised. In other words, the approach we've developed has a broad spectrum of application, which will go a long way in developing and implementing better strategies, policies, and a framework for cybersecurity and solutions for our critical stakeholders and ultimately the American people we serve. So what's needed now uh, from the National Guard to continue the successful work at the national level? I'd start by saying that the recent policy memorandum 16-002 from Deputy Secretary of Defense is a welcome document which provides, and I quote, guidance for the DOD to coordinate, train, advise, and assist cyber support and services provided incidental to military training to organizations and activities outside DOD and for the National Guard personnel use of DOD information networks, software, and hardware for state cyberspace activities. So please don't misconstrue or conclude that this, uh, this memo allows a blank check uh, to conduct cyber operations at will. On the contrary, it stipulates very clearly with very, very strict guidance on who can receive such services. But it is a great step in processing and codifying the Guard's role in cyberspace, uh, defense, et cetera, for nation and state. Continued dialogue also is needed at the national level, such as the forum here today. And if we truly believe that domestic cyber is a mission area for the Guard, there does need to be a national level debate on whether the Guard is appropriately resourced and, uh, for this dual mission. We may find the missions too great, and we may need to take a look at other innovative solutions uh, that, uh, that might be required. Out our way, we're starting to kick around a, a little bit of a unique idea, kind of a cyber version of our civil support team concepts, which does not directly have a federal tasking. The concept would be that it'd be designed to respond to cyber threats or uh, incidents on short notice or used in a preventive manner through exercises and assessments. But as we all know, that's often the long pole in the tent is funding and resourcing, and which can, we can't allow that to be the, uh, the thing that keeps us from moving forward. Another area seemingly in short supply in this area for power grids is effective and available training in the art of ICS and SCADA. There's just not enough of it out there. As part of our own internal efforts to develop our unique ISIS or ICS and SCADA warriors, we have developed an in-house training program, which we hope to uh, continue to use and perhaps even export to other state and federal agencies. We're in discussion how best to make this happen, but again, it's always that funding issue that comes to the forefront. Let me now spend a moment focusing on what activities and actions I believe uh, can be very helpful at the local and state level. One of the questions often posed is, uh, how, do, how do power utilities and their regulators, how can they most effectively use the National Guard uh, to protect critical infrastructure? Uh, and I'll turn over to Ben on this one, but I, I believe it could be construed at times that that relationship between public utilities and the regulators could be a little strained at times for obvious reasons. And I believe we need to create an environment where utilities and regulators can discuss vulnerabilities without the fear that the information being divulged could be used under punitive or castigatory type actions against the utility. This is where Washington believes that the, uh, using the Guard as a trusted agent or go-between uh, is an innovative solution and helps with developing an atmosphere based on trust, collaboration, communication, and coordination. Over the last several years, Washington State has conducted numerous open forums and workshops uh, talking about the what-ifs of the cyber attack. The last one we conducted included mission partners from DOD, DHS, FEMA, state, local, city, county, tribal officials, public and private utilities, state agencies, along with a large contingent of uh, private companies such as Boeing, Verizon, and Microsoft. In the end, what truly transpired was like-minded professionals coming together, exchanging ideas and business cards, building that partnership. But they all agreed on one thing. 
this is a real and present danger. We've got to deal with it. In closing, I believe the leveraging of the National Guard in this uh, critical fight to protect and safeguard the power grids across this great nation only makes sense. Without question, we are ready, reliable, and responsive. And yes, we are a great asset, and dollar for dollar, a tremendous investment at the lowest cost. <laughs> Back in 2012, the president said the cyber threat to critical infrastructure continues to grow and represents one of the most serious national security challenges we must confront. Well, folks, it's now 2016, and that statement has not changed a bit and still rings 100% true today. But what has changed is the start of new and innovative efforts by the National Guard, empowered by outstanding partnerships such as SNOPUD, state and other local agencies, federal partners, and other critical stakeholders. And we are getting in the right direction, heading in the right direction, because the attacks are not stopping. These are stealthy, they're relentless, and they have a lot of bad actors behind them. We no longer have the luxury to study and ponder the problem or debate it or blue in the face. The time is now. We need action. And a failure to do so is unacceptable. Or as Secretary of Defense Ashton Carter said while visiting a few months back in Seattle, these issues matter. It's not a game. This is about protection and our security and creating a world in which our citizens can wake up in the morning, hug their kids, take them to school, go to work, dream their dreams, live their lives. That's what it's all about, and you can't do that if you don't have security. That's why the National Guard is a critical component to this, is one more layer of defense. Thank you.